Hello, my name is Alan Bywater. I'm the Council's Team Leader for Community Policy. Uh, this uh, is the first of a series of four brief presentations about the Annual Plan 2022-2023-2024. Uh, uh, in this presentation, I will talk briefly um, to explain what the Annual Plan is all about and some of the pressures on the Council that are affecting the uh, upcoming Annual Plan. This slide shows our planning cycle. So every three years, uh, the council prepares a 10-year plan. Effectively, this is a long-term business plan. So it identifies the services the council intends to provide, the assets the council tends to, uh, to, to build. So when I say assets, I mean things like pipes, roads, buildings. So new ones, but also uh, where we're renewing uh, ones that have reached the end of their life. Um, it works out how much uh, all of that will cost, um, how it will be funded. Um, so that's the, the 10 year plan. Um, in years two and three of the cycle, um, we prepare an annual plan that really deals with any short term changes, any, any variations from what we'd planned for the year concerned in the, uh, in the 10 year plan. So for the, the annual plan 2023 24 is looking at the changes for that year. And then at the end of each year, we prepare an annual report. And that, uh, that shares our progress with the community, so sets out what we've delivered against the plan, uh, what has been spent, what we're going to be received. So it's a, an important uh, accountability uh, part of the, of the cycle. The purpose of the annual plan, as I said, is really to identify uh, any variations from the 10-year plan for the 2023-24 year. Um, it, it proposes an annual budget and a funding impact statement. So that's about where the, where the funding comes from. Um, and it is part of that accountability cycle. Um, for the annual plan 20, 23, 2024, there are four key uh, changes, things that are, that are helping, that are driving up the council's costs in the forthcoming year. So these are all things that have changed significantly since we adopted the uh, the long-term plan in mid-2021. So inflation, so I'm sure all of you are affected by inflation in your homes and your businesses. Um, similarly, it affects the council, so it's driving up our costs. Um, we had allowed for inflation in the 10-year plan, um, but inflation has been much higher than we had anticipated. So there's a, you know, there's a cost pressure there that we, we hadn't um, fully allowed for when we did the 10-year plan. Um, related to inflation is high interest rates. So um, the Reserve Bank has been increasing interest rates to try and control inflation. Um, the council is a big borrower, so our borrowings are come a little under $250 million. Um, so we have big loans. So um, as interest rates go up, our interest costs and our repayment costs increase. So um, that's driving up costs too. Uh, in terms of staff, so um, there's a very hot uh, labor market at the moment. Um, part of that's related to uh, COVID-19 and the uh, ongoing impact of, of um, fewer migrants. So yeah, there's, there's a shortage of, of, of skilled staff, um, this, this, and it's skilled staff that we need to deliver many of the, the services. Um, so um, what's happening is, is salaries and conditions are increasing and for us to be competitive and to attract and retain staff, we need to offer the same similar sort of, of uh, packages as other parts of the of the market. Um, so that's driving up our staff costs. And then the final area is depreciation. So depreciation is really about um, the funding to replace assets. So again, buildings, pipes, roads, when they come to the end of their life. Um, we collect money for depreciation during the life of the asset so that when it needs replacing, we have the funds ready to do that. Um, in the last year in particular, the, many of our assets have been revalued, so their value has increased significantly. And this means we need to collect more in depreciation costs than we had anticipated. Um, effectively, this reflects the fact that um, replacing those assets is going to cost more now than we had anticipated or um, so yeah driving in depreciation costs so our um, annual plan is, is is open for consultation at the moment so from the 29th of march to the 30th of april 
a number of different ways that you can make your views, uh, you can express your views. So probably the best place to go is, is, is uh, our Shape Tasman website and you'll see the, the, the address on this slide. Um, so there's, there's more information there and an opportunity to make a submission um, at that site. Alternatively, you can just email us to ltp at tasman.govt.nz or you can drop us a hard copy by mail or in the service centre. So there are also some copies of our consultation document at those locations. Um, if you would prefer, you can also, um, through the Shape Tasman website, you can um, record a video submission. Uh, for those people who would like to talk directly to the council about their views, there will be some hearings on the 16th and 17th of May, um, and you should indicate whether you would like to attend one of those. Thank you for listening. Um, I say this is the first of four, so there are there are three other short presentations that deal with other aspects of the annual plan.